Hey y'all, Spence here with your Weekly Truth. Now over the last few weeks, we've discussed who God is and the Trinity, but what about us? What are we even here for? So today, we're gonna take a look at the how and the why of creation. Starting in Genesis chapter one, after God created the earth in perfect orderly phases so that it could sustain human life, he then created mankind. Take a look with me at Genesis chapter one, verse 26 and 27. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So God created us in his image. But what does that even mean? So when we talk about image here, I want you to think about a statue. Some of you might be surprised to find out that this massive tank behind me isn't even the real deal. It's nothing more than a statue but its purpose is to bring honor and remembrance to its great victories and accomplishments on the battlefield of the Korean War. So then, if we are created in God's image, then our purpose is to bring glory and honor to God. We prove His existence every day by simply living. We reflect His attributes in our hearts and in our creative minds. Now we also reflect God's authority on earth by our reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals. If you've ever wondered why mankind has built metropolis-like cities all over the world and no other creature has, that's it right there. No other creation has been given the authority or the ability to do that. We are special to God, and He specifically gave us that authority as His image holders. But that doesn't give us the right to destroy ecosystems or pollute His creation through our sinful desires. Rather, as a reflection of God's authority, He's entrusted us to take care of and nurture His creation. And by doing so, we bring glory to the God that created it. Nothing is ours, it's actually all on loan from Him. And finally, He created us male and female. God didn't just want a couple of humans to rule the world, He wanted generations to come. He designed us to build communities and to be in community with each other, glorifying God through the great many talents that He's given us. I think John Piper said it best when he said, it's not good for man to be alone. Who's He gonna glorify God to? So that little community created in the beginning called male and female is representative of the community where God's glory radiates back and forth to each other and then out to the entire world. So as His creations, we are to reflect God's glory into the world as His images in community with one another. But in order to reflect God's glory, we have to be looking at the source. And the place where that glory shines the brightest is the gospel. Yet the deceiver has pulled a veil over the minds of those who don't yet believe. They can't see the glory of God and the good news that is the gospel and therefore they cannot reflect God's light. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 and 18 says, But whenever somebody turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit. Wherever the Spirit is, there is also freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. We are made in the image of God, but we cannot share in His glory until we've been conformed to the image of Christ. And as we are continuously shaped more like Christ, we will reflect the love of God to the people around us. But we can't do that unless we look to Christ. So this week, I pray that you look to God first and radiate His glory to the people around you. Have a blessed week, and I'll catch you next time on The Weekly Truth.